Hello and welcome back to the Orcs. Last time we got a claim on a duchy, and this time, well, we're going to go and press it. So, uh, what do we need to do for that? Well, we need a little bit of money. We need at least enough money in order to declare the war, which is zero. And then, we also probably want like another 20 on top, just so we don't go immediately into the negatives. So, let's see. Uh, it shouldn't be too many more months. We might get a random amount of money, which would be fantastic. And then we can just uh, go to war with that. You you hereby what? I hereby grant you the war camp of Gurzun. Its rank, formal territory, and associated income. May you rule it well. Um, thanks boss. Um, okay, he just gave us two titles? For no reason whatsoever? Why? Why did you do that? Also, you hate me. Like, you hate every single thing about me. Okay. Uh, how about you? Oh yeah, yeah, exactly the same. You you think I'm the worst. Okay. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about my liege expanding my income. Uh, and my realm. Uh, like, I'm not really... Okay. Let's look at the consequences. So we got a new war camp. Now the interesting thing about a war camp is that it's another duchy title. So now we have two duchy titles. Now, having two duchy titles, in theory, is absolutely fine. It doesn't really do anything, right? It's just another title, unless the succession law causes it to go to two different people. In that case, if we die, then our land splits between two heirs, and then suddenly we have to go and conquer all back again. So, let's have a look. So this is going to uh, Malthak, this is going to Malthak. What is the succession on this duchy? Primogenitor, primogenitor, primogenitor. Okay, we're fine. Don't need to worry. So our lease just basically gave us two things for no reason. There used to be a concept in CK2 called Grand Duke, I think, which I think is if you held multiple duchies, you could get like a, a domain bonus. I don't remember whether that was a mod or not, but um, it doesn't appear to be applying here, so I'm just going to assume that. I've either made it up or it doesn't exist in Crusader Kings 3, um, so that's fine. So, uh, I still wanted to clear the war, it hasn't really changed anything. We don't really have that many more troops, because I believe that my vassals will be providing me um, what might be best described as nothing. Who are you? Yes, yeah, so you're providing me 27 troops. And this dude right here, Bar. Yeah, okay, you're providing me 105 troops. Wait, is that the same one? I think it is, yeah. So you're, it's 105 and 27. So together they give me 132 troops. Nice. Nice. Well, so this feudal contract has been changed. Oh, okay, so we can't change it again, I guess. Which is weird, because we didn't change our feudal contract with them, but whatever. Um, right. Uh, oh, although that says it's it's been changed, to, maybe it just means it's been changed from the default. Can I modify it here? Um, all right, no. Okay, that's fine. Right, it must be per his lifetime. Well, no, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, we will work that stuff out later. I mean, it's the difference between 27 and 100 troops, which really means nothing. So, I don't know why I'm worried about it. Let's see here, what have we got? We can declare wars? Nah, we're fine. Gonna wait till we have a little bit more gold. Time for treatment, do new stuff. Uh, I'm now a deviant. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, there's a little bit more money. Now I think it's time to declare wars. High Crown Authority. Okay. Rulers can change between all available succession laws. Vassals cannot wage wars against other vassals unless they use a hook on their liege. Vassals cannot declare war on other vassals unless they have a hook on their liege. Liege? Uh, you want to explain this one here? Vassals' uh, titles cannot be inherited outside the realm. Vassals who refuse title revocation or vassal retraction are considered criminals. Okay, so he may try and revoke some titles. Now, what's weird is that he just gave me titles, so it would seem like a very weird time to revoke them. But, you know, you never know. Um, hey, I'd like to modify my feudal contract so I'm allowed to declare wars. Let me just double check I'm not allowed to. Wait, it says I'm allowed to. Wait a sec. No, 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 I'm not. Because I need a hook on my leash. Okay. Um, hey, you? I want to modify my feudal contract. I would love to get war declaration sanctified. 
Or is sanctioned, yeah. Um, I'll pay you extra taxes. He's okay with that. Wait, does he even get to choose? Um. Oh, I oh I just get to propose. This doesn't it doesn't just make it happen. Okay. Do I see what I want to do here? Uh. Hmm. I would also like title revocation protected, but that's probably too much to ask for. Um. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think I'd like to go for a tax up. Yeah, I want to trade war declaration for tax up. Hey, he said yes. Okay, that's fine. Let's declare war. Actually, I don't know whether this was a choice on his behalf. It did suggest that you. It, it did say that I could suggest a change, but it just seems to have gone straight in there. Maybe it suggests a change if it's a human uh, controlled play, um, like leash. And then it just makes it happen if it's not. I mean, that's fine. Right. Declare war. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, do you have any allies? No. You have 650 troops. Plus another 700 special troops. And then 10 trebuchets that don't matter. We have 1,788. So we're higher on levies. But we only have 400 special troops compared to their 700. Okay, plus we have 1,800, like, um, cannon fodder. That's fine. I think we, uh, declare a war. Right. Then I'm gonna raise my troops here. And we'll see what happens. So they're running away, which seems like a good, um, thing for us. I'm gonna start sieging here. Six months left, five months left. I'm just gonna siege. If you're not gonna fight me, I'll just siege it. We'll see what happens. Marshall perk. Men at arms counter efficiency doesn't really matter as much. Um, but we'll take it anyway. That's fine. Fight for power. You you want to fight me? Oh, we are actually about even. We are about even due to our wounds. War chief, golfing bull, I have come for you. Your rule is coming to an end. I challenge you to a death combat according to the traditions of the Lord of the Dark. Okay. I could say no, but obviously we're going to accept the challenge. Right, let's see here. Um, oh, primary heir of the wrong dynasty. Oh, he beca oh, I see how it does it. When you enter this combat, it makes him your heir, so when you die, you become him. Okay, so that's how it, it handles this. That's fine. Well, let's see here. One of us is walking away. Nothing's happened yet, so... We can boast about his level of fame. There's no increase to my risk of injury, and we just gain, we give him stress. I think this one seems like a good one to start with. It's an advantage that we have over him, and he will not be able to injure us off of it. They cut deep into his ego. Form is decent with some lapses. His is formidable. Holding off my blows well, but he seems close to faltering. Ooh, nice. Relishing the pain, you lean into Mark's attacks for uh, advantage. You get fueled by pain, get extra prowess. That seems good, actually, because uh, we are a little bit lower on prowess, right? In fact, that would put us ahead. Or we use this one, Strike, Parry, Repost, which will just be a high chance of success. I think we take this one. We take the advantage. Nothing quite gets the blood pumping like the sting of sweet agony, and no one understands pain quite like I do. Fueled by my wounds, I rush um, Bark, unleashing a barrage of savage thrusting jabs with my spear. Bark can, uh, counters with a fierce hail of quick slashes, almost running me through repeatedly. Decent with some lapses, his is formidable. His guard is fierce, I feel far from victory. So we, we lost a little bit there, but we now have higher prowess. And we'll see how that goes. So we do medium with low injury, or we do strike parry repost. I think we do strike parry repost. Yeah. Uh, lap we had lapses. His stance is incredible. Uh, okay. Let's have a look at what happened. He had high likelihood of success, low chance of injury. Although we can do the same thing here, being the fastest blade. Is that what he just did? Uh, yes, I think it is what he just did with aspiring blade master. Let's do this. Wow, that didn't work well. <laughs> Um, 
War Chief Golfumbal of Emigond has finally found peace at 65 years of age. He was slain by you in a duel. A known murderer, he will atone for his unspeakable crimes in the next life. War Chief Bark ascends to the throne. Prone to rage, Bark's uh, enemies and vassals are likely to live in fear of him. Oh. My attempts at flourishing proved misguided, with my opponents countering each in turn. Bark screams at me, his tone utterly unbecoming of a noble, only to switch to a powerful cleave of his sword mid-yell. There's something about the voice that freezes me up like a buck at the sound of a hunter's horn. The blow should be easy to parry or dodge or anything really, but I don't. Instead it bites deep into my shoulder, pushing apart bone and spraying us both with arterial blood. Wow. Well, we're dead. And we are now a consecrated orc leader for 10 years and we got 500 prestige and um, well, I guess we're in charge now. Um, I didn't really expect to be in charge, but that's fine. Like this guy to be in charge, so he's a whip master. Move quicker when leading, okay. He's also an Urukai berserker, which is nice. You would expect him to be given, you know, he doesn't beat one in combat. Rough terrain expert is good. Holy warrior is okay. Okay, he's got some positives. He's got some positives. He's arrogant, stubborn, and wrathful. Very orc-like. Uh, are we a different religion? Cult of the Lidless Eye. I just want to check over here. Yeah, this is all Cult of the Lidless Eye. Okay, we're also one domain over from where we were before. Uh, because we have his domain that he had. Which might be the one I give away. Um... Oh no, maybe. One of these ones we could also give away, potentially. How, um, how is this one up here? 2.7. Is this my capital? Yeah, it's my capital, so I'm getting a boosted 1 to that. Uh, my old cap... Wait. Is this also getting a boosted 1 for being capital? This is realm capital. This is also realm capital. Alright, I'm going to have to wait on that for it to work out what's happening. Right. Marshall... We got 27, uh, we got 24 out of 27 perks. Do we want to get to absolute control? I think so. I think that these are all like really good traits that the last one's here. I'll take it. Let's go for prowess, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Which actually means we're probably a better leader. We are indeed. Wonderful. Um, yeah. We, st we are not married? Really? We have children, but we're not married. We're son and player heir, this guy. Okay. Not very good at fighting. We were married. Oh, I see. Mur murdered by us. Oh. Well, I mean, that's, you know, something. Now, um, we are no longer just marrying Lundbeds. So I see a giant. I'm like, you know what? Giant orc sounds like a plan to me. Let's go. Uh, and then we've got concubines, uh, which we can leave for just now. Wait, this, that says concubines. Previously, was it not? Did we not have second wives? Um, I'm sure we had second wives previously. We have a look here. This is called Cult of the Lidless Eye. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out why this has changed for us. Maybe if I wait a little bit, it will uh, catch itself up. Okay, we've married. We were trying to seduce this person. Or we're back to being seductive. Okay. Or we were being seduced. What would you like me to do? You'd like me to be your steward. Well, that was what my previous character was doing, so that makes sense. Attack. There we go. We've won the siege. Make sure we have a marshal in charge. Our marshal is going to be this guy who actually doesn't hate me that much, which is crazy for an orc. In fact, he kind of likes me. Okay. Um... Clear those out. We can lawfully imprison Lundbed. Does Lundbed have any money? No. Oh yeah, you see, we weren't Cult of the Lidless Eye before. We were, um... Shaq Burzdagi, I think. Yeah! Okay, so it switched all of our stuff over. So that's the time where the Orc has come. So Cult of the Lidless Eye... It's concealed within his fortress. The Lord of Mordor sees all. His gaze pierces shad a cloud, shadow, earth, and flesh. An eye, lidless, wreath, and flame. A god upon Middle-earth shall re reveal... All shall revere him, Sauron, the great lord of uh, the earth. Just checking, no money, so I don't want to imprison. Okay, what else have we got here? 
The official state religion of Sauron's empire, the Cult of the Lidless Eye, goes by many names, but all its variants revolve revolve around submission and acknowledgement of the divine authority of Sauron, the Lord of the Earth. His sacraments are administered through sorcerer priests trained in the Morgul arts, and the high priest is the steward of Barad-dûr, the mouth of Sauron. So what, what have we got? Human sacrifice, cool. Uh, subjugation beneath the dark tower. Greedy is a virtue. Compassionate craven or sins. And all of us get domain taxes, vassal taxes, and friendly levy reinforcement rate up. That's quite nice, yeah. Uh, encroaching shadow. Uh, you got the peace opinion instead of offense of war opinion. A conquest cast a spell against neighboring rulers. An invasion once per lifetime. All of that's fine. Plus uh, minus two uh, diplomacy, plus two prowess. Okay. Okay. Interesting. To see if there was anything else. Witchcraft and kinslaying are okay. Fair enough. Right. So we do have concubines, which I believe we will lose prestige if we don't have them filled in. Yeah, under concubine limit. Okay, so we just need to find three concubines. There's Lunbed. There's Bullbed. Uh, and then we need one more, which we'll get from like some war at some point, no doubt. Right, so we got those ones in there. Uh, let's have a look at these. So you are no longer a realm capital, right? Yes, yeah, so you lost one. That's fair enough. So you're still my realm capital. Rule, I can't know how much you are because it's above the domain limit, which is very annoying as we previously discussed. I could give it away though. Let's give away rule. Uh, and it was suggested, and it's actually a great suggestion, that potentially we should give away land to not orcs. And the reason we should give away land to not orcs is because we have orc infighting, which makes them not like us, which is on top of the normal orc uh, negative. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so we'd get general opinion down, but then there's orc infighting as well, which is another 10, well, we can just ignore it entirely. So, let me, um, I mean, I can see here, do we have orc infighting? We just have minus 25 for orc. Maybe we don't get orc infighting. Maybe that's just the other religion gets orc infighting. Let me, let me go check my other religion in the only place I know where, which is back here and checking the previous ruler. Did that give... Oh, there you go. There's Orcish in fighting. Oh, okay. So actually we don't get the negative... Uh, yeah, we don't get these negative modifiers. So we don't need to put non-orcs in charge. Huh. We still could, potentially, but interesting. Um, Let's see. Do we have a non-orc around? Yeah, we have this guy. I still think it might be cool to have this guy in charge. Just, you know, or this one. Just as something different. Let's go for this dude. Why not? You can have the encampment of Rull. Nice. So that'll make us a little bit more money, I think. Uh, well, it'll make us more money in the long term because we're not losing 20% of our income. Right, attack up here. This should be easy. Like This should be easy. We, have a be the we get defending in hills, better commander, better traits, more soldiers. They have higher quality, which is their only thing, but I still think that we'll be fine. Yeah, we are. Uh, that was good. Okay, new martial perk. We will take uh, prepared conscription, gold maintenance down, and friendly levy, friendly territory levy reinforcement up, which means that we act, that just made us 1.4 gold a turn. Perfect. Let's head down to their capital, which is likely where they're heading anyway. Spouse, we choose the option here that we want that doesn't lower um, it uh, doesn't lower opinion. We'll just take that one. Gout ridden. Uh, do no more than is necessary. We're just going to send my physician away. Hey, level of fame went up. Throws a passion. Sure, be my lover. Why not? You know what? Where are you? Yeah, like, why don't you just um, make, be my concubine? Sure. Sounds perfect. Right. Siege this down. Where's their army? I don't really know where... The oh, there's their army. Uh, can we ransom these people back? Yeah, I'd like a hundred gold, please. Uh, why don't you head to this one next? We're still at, uh, we're still going. Fantastic. Let's ransom back for another twenty-five gold. 
How long's the siege? Three months. How long's your siege? Six months. Uh, I still think it's worth it, although we do have a dangerous faction. Oh, it's not really dangerous, it's just counts as dangerous because it's got no, um, like, top, it's got no limits to when it can fire, so it's like, yeah, it's not dangerous. Well, I assume, uh, assuming none of my vassals are in it, yeah, that's fine. Now, taking that one, we've taken all of their land, enforced demands, all of this is ours. Wonderful. Now, I really should have checked... I was going to say I really should have checked how much it was making before we took over, but that's absolutely fine. Oh wait, it just all he just becomes our vassal? Oh, that's fine. And we took the war camp, which has a succession law of primogenitor, so we don't need to get rid of it. That's fine. Cool. Um, disband? Yeah. Also, hey, hey! Holy war for the governorship of uh, Ferithalin, which is where? Oh, this bit up here, so that's all going to become uh, Mordor land. Love it. Okay, everything is looking much better. We now have 6,000 troops available to us. That's crazy. We have 2,000 levies. This is going to allow us to just walk over the rest of what's going on here. Do I have a uh, Cassus Belly against you? Oh, yeah, now I can just be like, oh, I have de jure ones. But yeah, we could just be like, I'm attacking you. You're allied to this person, that's fine. I mean, together you have a reasonable, you know, sized army, but we do now have 2,000 levies, which kind of even things out a little bit. Awesome. We also have more orc rabble. I guess we inherited uh, my current guy. Yeah, we have two different siege towers. We inherited this guy's men at arms as well. This is not ideal as a setup. It's kind of okay because it means you can split your army in two and siege twice and like siege twice as many things with a siege unit. But yeah. It's not ideal in terms of setup. Again, like, um, oh no, the, this is eight of eight, so that's fine. I was gonna say this isn't ideal, but actually, because it's eight of eight, that's fine. Why do these guys cost double the amount? Because they're reinforcing. Cool. Answered my own question. Fantastic. Well, we have three thousand gold. We have uh, most of the land within our Elysia's title, thanks to our Elysia giving us a little help in hand. So uh, I think it might be time to end the episode. Oh, also, Isengard? Um, you appear to have done something to, um... You, you, you've done something to the land over here, of which I have forgotten even what it was called. The Riddermark. Yes, you've gotten rid of the Riddermark entirely. It just does not exist anymore. Huh. And in fact, it looks like this land might be even... I'm not sure, is it just that Gondor hasn't conquered it, or is it eating into Gondor? It, this this is not good for for the uh, realms of men. Also, uh, he has switched his name to Elisar, and he has a child. Okay, and he married Arwen. Okay, all of that uh, is much expected. So, I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.